morning, Soul Family. Well, what's going on today? Let me see. We see. I got new glasses on this morning. I'm trying to get used to these glasses. And uh, they feel like they're a little bit too much. So what's weird to me is I'm looking at this thing go across the water. Whoops, sorry. You guys look at it right there. And it looks like a freaking houseboat. It's a houseboat. That's intriguing. Wouldn't that be fun to live on a houseboat? I have never seen. I mean, we've got party boats, right? They're like a, you know, the party boat style where they don't go very fast. I mean, they can go, I don't know. I, I think they can go like 30 miles an hour. I don't know how fast they go, but they're pontoon boats, right? Basically. But that looked like a houseboat, which makes sense. I mean, anybody can do whatever they want, right? You got a pontoon boat. Make it into a tiny house. Oh my God, how fun would that be? Anybody have a river with a bay where I can live on a tiny house? House? Oh my God, did I sound Canadian right then or not? Tiny hoose? <laughs> it comes out sometimes. See, when I say out, and sometimes I say mom. Very, very infrequently I say mom. Usually I say mom. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Gosh, I started to have a banana this morning because I was starving. I had dreams all night. Very, very lucid dreams. Like incredible dreams. Yep, I was at a garage sale. And I was painting. And it was interesting. I was kind of going over what my... When I was talking about... You remember I said yesterday the father saying, Hey, you want to help me build paint this heritage house? Right? And I said to you, it probably is actually literal, but it's also giving me symbolic messages. Spirit does that with us all the time. We will have, I mean, you know, you'll have a lucid dream. Now, of course, I don't know when it's um, prophetic until it, I see it happening in front of me. But it was shown to me last night. <laughs> Again, like I get review dreams, right? Remember this dream, Sherry, that we showed you? And you weren't sure if this was prophetic or if this was actually real? Where the people moved to that little small town and they were going to start that business and it was kind of a rundown place and... And uh, they were fixing up that place. And then the water came in, right? And you were like, where's my car? You were looking for your black BMW that was in the parking lot. And the water came up. And anyway, all of those dreams, you're being shown now in review to say, yeah, you know what? Guess what? You were right. Those were prophetic. But you did get symbolic messages out of those too, didn't you? So spirit has a, has a way to teach us things, right? So, <clears throat> I like that idea. You know, we've been talking about a tiny house. What about a pontoon boat and build a freaking tiny house on a boat? You know, Lake Mead, there's so much land. I wonder if you could live on a, on a houseboat in Lake Mead somewhere. They've got docks. I'm going to look into that. It's hot there. You know, it's a freaking desert. But if you're on the water, I don't know. i got to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> go up the Snake River, right? I've never been there. I always wanted to go up the Snake River. All right. And Lake Powell. Ooh, I know there's will have houseboats on Lake Powell, but usually it's a vacation place. Okay. We're going to start with our stuff. And I was out walking one day. My power walks. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> Clearing. Sorry. Excuse me. And uh, I got to the little lake area, the, the little bay of the, of the, um, oh, I saw that in a dream, remember? I said it was a bay and there was land around it. Wouldn't it be fun to live there? Wouldn't it be fun to live on that bay in the water? Dang. Anyway, this was washed up on shore and it was totally waterlogged and I mean, it's the panther, right? It's black and blue. <laughs> okay. Now think about this. I'm the panther. So is my spiritual twin. And when I saw this soccer ball, Soccer was my game when I was in Canada. That's what I played. I loved it. I was good at it. I used to bounce it on my head. This was when I was living in um, Burnaby. And right before I moved to California, I was playing. I was living in Burnaby in Canada. <clears throat> and uh, that's when we lived in that really bitchin' heritage house that I freaking loved. Soccer was my game. This is where I won the 50-yard dash. I got out of there first pray, first blue ribbon, but I, and then we moved. <laughs> yeah, these are all messages to me. I get them loud right now. So anyway, I see the soccer ball and I'm like, wow, flashback. And yeah, you know what? I've had the shit kicked out of me. I'm black and blue. So is my spiritual twin, no doubt. But guess what? The water is gone. I've had this up on my patio forever and it cracks me up because you would think, I mean, it's got holes here. 
right? And I wondered if it wouldn't hold its, if, if it wouldn't hold its, um, the air. It does. This thing's freaking amazing. Talk about resilient, right? Panthers are resilient. Look at that one taking a leap of faith. And there's very little black, very little shadow, mostly blue, which is peaceful, calm, and truthful, right? And the black is leading the way. That's just like, it's like, a, it's like I'm burning through the black. I had this in my dream last night. My landlord was talking about painting the house, and he said, I want to paint it black. Well, black means, you know, bring it into the black. That's a lot of money, right? And I, and I, but that's also depression. And I'm like, no, you know, this is what you want to do. You want to paint the whole house dove gray. And your fireplace, where the fireplace is, you can paint the brick there black. And that way, when the fire lights up, it's like the fire's coming out of the darkness. Isn't that bitching? And then you can do the blue that you want as little accents. Like on the mantle, you could do blue. You can do little accents of blue. But you want dove gray. Now, dove is peaceful, calm. Prophecy, soulmate connections. There it comes again. I want you to see it. I'm really excited about this. I'm looking at this. Okay, so it definitely is a pontoon boat. It's so interesting looking. I've never seen one like I've never seen that one. I mean I, I sit here all the time and I watch the the boats go across the lake. So it's got like a little cab on top. You know what it looks like? It looks like they've got an old truck on top of it. Oh my god, I'm getting an idea. And it's a big pontoon. Okay, I'm getting an idea. Get a pontoon boat. This is the idea. This is the idea that Spirit said, you're gonna have an idea come up in the next few days and it's gonna be really cool. This is it. You get a pontoon, right? A big pontoon boat, the, big, the biggest space you can find. And then you get an old school bus and you make a tiny home out of that school bus. Now what you can do is you can work on the school bus on the land while you're looking for the pontoon boat, right? And then once you get it ready, no, you can't because you gotta get it on the pontoon boat. So you gotta take the bus and you gotta put it on the pontoon but you can trailer it. Oh my God, what a bitchin' idea. That was cool, I mean, I, I can't really see it that clearly across the lake, but think of it. You've seen people living in school buses, right? And in, in prison buses and in motor homes. Why don't you take that freaking motor home, stick it on a, on a I mean, a, the trailer, right? Stick it on top of a pontoon and you got a houseboat. <laughs> yeah! Oh, are you listening to this? Oh, I like that idea a lot. Okay, so Dove, Dove is take a breath, Dove is, Relax, dove is peace, dove is soulmate connections, dove is, you know what, the dove, the dove comes, you send the dove out and it comes back with an olive branch in its mouth, it lets you know, ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six, don't be so worried about material possessions, that's what the six doves just said when they went by, and we've been having uh, this dragonfly hanging out here all morning, it's okay, I'm going to wait here until he comes back, so I don't have to jerk the camera around, come back here, you little chicken, um, Dove is also about bringing a, a branch of peace, right? A, do, a dove branch. We talked about that yesterday. Come back over here. It's a beautiful one. It's blue. You can't see him, but he'll be back. Come on. Come on. He's playing in the downdraft. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's a big one. He's super pretty. See, remember I said yesterday when we were out on the lake, I said to that gentleman that was going to sell off his property, don't sell your property. He's going to build a safe family compound, and, and he wants to bring back the natural habitat. Well, the natural habitat would be the family. Bring the family back together. you got to do that by extending an olive branch, right? Bring everybody back in together and build that compound safe. But what he wanted to do is he wanted to build it so that the dragonflies would come back and roost. And I said, well, all the construction and tearing things up, nobody knows where they belong. So if you could build a safe, peaceful habitat for them, they'll come back. And he goes, that's what I'm going to do. I know somebody's getting this message and they're going to listen. <clears throat> but uh, I said where I'm at, you know, there's a one or two dragonflies like him. I know you guys can't see him. I can. He's beautiful. I said, but if they were in an area with bulrushes where there's water and, and reeds and it's like, it's like Moses, right? Moses was hid in the reeds. It was safe for him there. There he is. He's so big. So he says, I'm going to do that. I'm going to plant it in a couple of different places and build a natural habitat where the dragonflies can come and it's beautiful for me and it doesn't look like a freaking parking lot and he's gonna keep it all a part of the family compound. Come back here, you need water. So anybody living on the Indian reservation in Arizona that has water pro property? I don't know, maybe you can just put your houseboat on the water and you don't have to own it, right? You just live on it. Because if it's off grid, if it's on tiny home, you don't need to rent it, it's free. <clears throat> Messages. Okay, anyway, here's just the example of, you know what, 
coming out, coming into the light. There I am, this blue panther leading with black. Black is also tough and strong and that's his shield of protection around this blue dragon, uh, blue dragonfly. Hmm, so this dragonfly is the panther, right? And he's, he's leading with this shield of protection around him to keep him safe. Oh, he's beautiful. I freaking love this soccer ball. I want to go pump it up with air. I've kept it ever since I saw it. And check this out. I've had it for two years. White, size four. Four angels, they're all around you. You're completely guided, protected, and loved. And it's universal, a universal white light. That's what we have. Universal Miz. <laughs> I'm a Miz, right? I'm a Miz. What else can we find on here that's helpful for us? Universal Miz. So how many Panthers are there? There's two. There's a pair. I love this. This is going to be one of our items to choose from. And I'm choosing this one. Because that's me and my spiritual twin. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose everybody up here on the platform. We're going to choose the yoga frog, the rasta frog. Hey, dude. What's up? Him and his hacky sack, right? We're going to choose the, the tiger. These are all of my totems. And they're all of many of our totems. They're definitely your guys' totem messengers. You've got the frog, which is frog, which is transformation and healing, right? And getting rid of emotional baggage, releasing. He's chill. I like him. Then we got the tiger, right? You're gonna hear me roar louder than a freaking lion. I got the eyes. I've got passionate eyes. I'm tired. I, I'm, I'm here to protect my rock, protecting my birds, right? Life's tough. Wear a helmet right underneath me. And here's this lion. He's learned that he doesn't have to roar. His greatest strength is being gentle and compassionate and listening to that little bird that was whispering messages to them. So we've got quite a few today. So this is what we're gonna do. This is fun. We're gonna do one, two three, four, five. We're going to do five. Because why? Because big changes are happening in our life right now. Significant changes. They're always for the better. So let's call upon spirit for help with those changes, shall we? Yes. Let's pick up some rosemary. And we're going to burn it together to ask for a blessing on this reading and for help so that we get the messages that we need to hear. We're going to ask for clarity. We're going to ask for truth. We're going to ask for peaceful energy. We're going to ask for no negative energy to be allowed into this arena. No personal uh, intentions. This is I have my own intentions for myself, but it will not affect this reading. We're asking spirit to guide this reading. Oops, I wish you guys could have seen that. It was cool. I just didn't want to burn my fingers. I love how rosemary burns. I really do. This is really super cool. It burns away with, the, and you can hold on to the staff, and it doesn't hurt you. I freaking love that. Okay. It burns clean. I like that. Anything that burns clean is good. Okay, so we got five items. Significant change. So the decks that we're going to be using, this is interesting, how are we going to do this? We're going to use the angels, gods, and goddesses. We're going to use the oracle of shadows and light, Sandy. <laughs> and we're going to use my wisdom of Avalon because I freaking love it. And uh, everybody is going to get messages from the, I can do it. Remember when I said yesterday, I can do it myself. That is something that, you know what? I've had it in me my whole life and it's not something I'm planning on letting go. I can do it myself and so can you, says the solar plexus. The cards are by Louise Hay. And uh, Louise Hay is awesome. I grew up with Louise Hay. My mom used to, uh, everything was about Louise Hay. You know, this, she wrote the book, You Can Heal Your Life, and, it, and all about positive, the power of positive affirmations, po positive thinking, power of positive thinking, which I totally agree with. She also, um, she's the one who teaches you how, she, she, she passed away last year, or maybe it was the beginning of this year, no, I think it was last year, um, back into spirit. So she's helping me, bringing me back, connecting me with my mom from my roots, right? My mom did this I, my whole life. Even when she was a Jehovah's Witness, she had these books. Right? She never let them go because <clears throat> she believed in the science of it. How what you tell yourself, you're, you know, do you like, like, it's like when I say 111, right? Do you like what you just, uh, what you do you like what you're creating? Because the universe just took a snapshot of your future, of what you're creating with your thoughts. If you don't like it, change your thoughts. Man, you know, do whatever you need to do. 
get mad, release it, and then say cancel, clear, delete, uh, clear your energy, whatever you need to do, but shift it because you are creating your future. So hmm, maybe I'm going to be living on a houseboat. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Lake Powell. I've always wanted to go up the Snake River. Never been. Maybe I'll just do a vacation like that, but I think the idea is fun. My dad almost bought me a houseboat when I was divorced. Um, you know, when my mom chased my my son's father away. <laughs> We used to always go to the Jolly Roger in Oceanside, California, and there was a marina there. And we sat there one time, and my dad says, you know what, Sherry, would you like to have a houseboat? And I'm like, hell yeah. Are you freaking kidding me? And he took me, and he showed me this houseboat in the marina. It was amazing. It was a two-bedroom. It, it was so cool. It was in the marina right there. What a beautiful location. Oh, my God. But, my, but that was in Oceanside, and my family lived in Temecula, which, not Temecula, in Escondido, which was like, what, an hour away? And my mom's like, no, she wanted to have my son. So it was, it, it, it was kiboshed. <laughs> but now I'm thinking, you know, that was a good idea, Dad. You were smart. Now that houseboat would be worth a fortune in, in ocean crime. <laughs> okay. I don't know why this is coming up. It's kind of up for a reason, though. But I'm thinking maybe in a more peaceful location, the idea of that houseboat. I loved it then. I like it now. So now you're going to see me on my Facebook page change from... Um, all the little tiny homes in the school buses. I do want to travel. I do like the idea of traveling. But uh, how about how about having that tiny home on a houseboat? I like that. I'm going to start looking up that. Hold on while I take a bite of my nanner. I get these bananas. And I wait until they start getting the brown, right? Because that's where all the sugar is. This is where you shouldn't really eat them. And then I peel the banana, peel off, and I throw them all in the freezer. And when I do my smoothies, I throw half a banana in when it's already frozen. But I was too hungry and I haven't frozen them yet, so I had to take a bite. First thing I heard in my head was potassium. I don't know. I guess they have potassium. <clears throat> okay. We're going to use the panther to hold up everything. Okay? Because <laughs> that's who's been holding everything up. <laughs> You've been holding everything up, blue panther. And in all reality has been holding everybody else up, right? Has been taking care of everybody. It's time to take care of ourselves because we had the shit kicked out of us and it's time for us to roll. It's time for us to take that leap of faith, right? Look how beautiful that is. Ugh. <clears throat> Florida Panthers. Okay, here we go. Hmm, thinking about that. I don't like Florida, it's too humid. No, I don't want to live there. At 17 minutes and 41 seconds. Ooh, now that was a very clear cut, wasn't it? We start with the Panthers. Oh my God, you guys. That's really intriguing. <laughs> That's really intriguing. Florida Panthers. Humid. I don't want to live there. Okay, so that gives me the answer. I kind of knew that already. So again, we'll reiterate what Spirit said yesterday. It's kind of a bummer that we got this. Well, we'll do a couple more. We'll do a card. Another card in this, in this deck. <clears throat> so right now, Spirit's telling you to tell someone to back off. There's somebody that you're not liking. Somebody that is pushing your buttons. Somebody that is taking advantage of you. Somebody that's kicking you around like a soccer ball. Somebody that you need to leap out and get the hell away from there and recognize that you are surrounded in white light and you have got a shield of protection around your crown. Or maybe they're telling you you need to put a shield of protection around your crown, a titanium shield, so that you don't allow into your head the negative thoughts and the, and the beliefs that are coming from what people are saying to you. Pay attention to your head right now that you're, you're leading with your head. So you need to lead with your heart. Get yourself under control. Lead with your heart, use your head, and get the hell out of there because that panther is leaping out. And look at it, it's literally disappearing. If you don't, if you don't protect yourself and get out of there, you will disappear. That's what I'm sh being shown. So you need to tell, you need to just put up that shield of protection. And I don't think it's about being polite anymore because for this to have popped out twice, it's enough. The cord needs to be cut. The wall needs to be put up. And it's like, you know what? I don't like your energy. I don't like the bullshit that you're spewing. And I know you're lying. And you're taking advantage. And you're pushing my buttons. And I don't want this energy. You've been overriding your instincts. You've been trying to befriend someone. Trying to be kind. And you know what? They're not good for you. So Spirit's saying, look, you didn't get it yesterday. You thought it was wonderful to live in 
everybody hang out in that compound and you know what those people are not where you're meant to be you need to get the hell out of there do you not understand this this is the second day in a row we're telling you they're going to portray themselves as nice and charming and oh yeah they want to give you a hug and they're going to be nice and but you know what they're up to their neck in illegal trickery and bullshit and you need to stay away from that <clears throat> that's one message for the other message is there's somebody that's pushing your buttons right there's somebody that's opportunistic. They want what you have. They they know that you're you're the brains behind the behind the magic. Without you, they don't get what they need. But you're they're not in your highest good. You need to get the hell out of there. Interesting. I see another barge leaving. Funny that I'm seeing these pontoon boats today. It's all about because you can fit a lot of people on a pontoon boat. So you've been carrying that one's going slow. It's dragging you down on your emotional waters. You need to be able to spring into action. So there's something going on, whether you're aligned with a, a, a family, a group of friends, um, a business, Facebook, with me, absolutely. You don't know who anybody is, right? And, and, and unfortunately, sometimes you don't even know who your friends are, but if things aren't been going well for you, ask yourself, why? Spirit's telling you really, really loud. It's time to start snarling, and we're snarling. We are. We're telling you. Fuck that shit and get the hell out of there. That is the truth, and we're not being soft about it. You've been too kind. You've been too sweet. You've been getting the shit kicked out of you. You've been carrying the load like that barge on the emotional waters, and you're starting to lose yourself. You have the strength. Use your head. Protect this crown so that you hear what Spirit's telling you and get the hell out of there. Look at the strength that you have. Lead. Lead with your solar plexus. Look what's protected here. You know what's not protected? Your ass. Your ass is not protected. Get your ass out of there. Do you understand that? Your ass is not protected. Your back end is not protected. Whoa. There's somebody who wants your back end and you know what I'm talking about. Get out of there or you're gonna lose your shit. And that's the truth. That's the truth. What's protected is from your solar plexus up. I am capable of doing whatever I set my mind to. Your heart is protected. Your throat, your strong forearms, you can pull yourself out of there because right now you're sinking in that sand. Remember? You're sinking in the sand. Makes me think of my twin <clears throat> and I running along the beach. Now that I've told you, my twin and I are the same person, right? the great wave of emotion that was coming. We couldn't outrun it. We couldn't outrun it. We were sinking in the sand. One came back and picked up the other. And we rode that emotional wave and got the hell out of there. This, you're sinking in the sand here. You're sinking. You gotta get out of there. And last night in my dream, I watched as my wolf dog, a big wave came. We were supposed to go diving, diving down deep, right? I didn't have my dive gear. And I said, wait, I got to go back and get my dive gear. And the person said, no, nope, we got to go. The boat's leaving. Got to get on the boat. And I'm like, shit. And I had money that I had sold all this stuff. And I stuffed it in my bra. I always, I always did that when I was having garage sales. I'd stuff it in my bra. And then the wave came and it lifted us up. And bam, it came back down hard. And everything was all over the f top of the water. And I thought I lost my money. I'm like, oh my God, my money's gone. Listen to the angry birds. And, uh... I asked, you know, do you see, everyone's picking stuff up in the, in the emotional waters, do you find it, where's my money, do you see the money, no, I don't see it, I don't see it, shit, so then I, that's when I, the landlord wanted to paint the house black, I want to paint it black, right, that's the money, let's bring it into the black, and I said, nope, you're going to paint it dove gray, right, you're going to have one wall, the firewall is going to be painted black, and accents of blue, but dove gray is the full body of the house, think about your house, and isn't that a good idea? And then my dog turned into a wolf and he, that's the person that I was talking to and he jumped into the pool and I said, come on, get out of the pool. Let's go. And there was a lady there with a little baby at the steps and she was sitting right by the steps and she was trying to help the baby up out of the water. <clears throat> and uh, my dog was paddling around, freaking out. And I said, come on, you can do it. If you could dive into that emotional waters, you can get out. Yes, you can because you're the freaking Osprey. And so he came over and the lady says to me, hey, are you the one that lost all your money? And, and the person goes, God, how embarrassing. Freaking told, she told everybody I lost all my money. 
And so I said to my, to my wolf dog, come on, if you can get in there, you can get out. So he climbed up the steps and he got out and he shakes off, right? Shakes off all the emotional waters because he could do it. He went in, took a dip, came back out. And then I was standing there on the, uh, on the side of the pool thinking, great, now everybody knows I lost all my money. Who gives a shit? Get over it. Everybody goes through shit like that, right? I feel around in my, in my pocket, my, 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 my bra. Now think of what your bra is. It's right over your heart, right? I started feeling around in my heart and I found papers. I found papers. Remember the contracts? I found papers. And I pulled the papers out and there was all my money. Because guess what? That's where your heart is. That's where your worth is. You recognize, you, you realized your self-worth. It isn't about the money. It's about who you are. And, that, and I realized I hadn't lost anything. I hadn't lost any of my self-worth. It was all there. It was all protected. I had been given a shield of protection because Spirit said, we're keeping a shield of protection around you this time, but you need to learn how to shield and protect yourself. And you need to get out of there because you're going to lose your ass. Your ass is not covered. Get out of there. You're strong enough still to get out. If you can get in, you can get out. Man, this is amazing. But right now, there's the colors, black and blue. You use the colors. You got What happens to you when you get beat up? You're black and blue, right? But it's also a shield of protection. Blue is the truth. Black is the shadow. Use it. We're going to use it. Voodoo in blue. Use that. Remember when instead of allowing yourself to sink and disappear, use whatever circumstances you're in. Use that energy to propel you forward. And that's what this smart panther is doing. I'm going to take that adversity. I'm not going to lose my ass. I'm not going to lose myself. I'm not going to sink in that sand. I'm going to take that energy. I'm going to pull it right down in here into the middle of my sacral chakra. And I'm going to spin it. And I'm going to use that energy. And I'm going to freaking jump out of that pool. Because you know what? There's steps right there leading me out. Spirit gave me the steps. I saw that yesterday. I said, I'm seeing steps. Remember when I was in the... When we were in the lake. And somebody asked me a question. Am I going to get a job? Am I going to find a job soon? And I said, it's by harvest. I saw steps. I was looking at steps. Spirit's going to give you the steps. One step at a time. Follow those steps. Oh my God, I love it. See, I didn't have to use cards yesterday. Or was it the day before? So Corey, am I going to find a job? Yes, you are. Spirit's going to give you the steps. And by Halloween, you're going to have it together. And it might have something to do with the harvest moon on the 24th. Remember, I was pointing to the harvest and I kept thinking it was pumpkins, but it wasn't pumpkins. It's about harvest. Your harvest is coming, but you need to follow the steps. And sometimes it's just a stepping stone. You got to stop here, take a rest, then take the next step up. My dog was drowning in that emotional pool. He wasn't though. He thought he was. He could swim. Look how strong his forearms were. And he was a wolf when he was in that pool. He dove in as a puppy, came out as a wolf. There was a baby. The lady was trying to help out, but that baby... That was someone else's baby. That wasn't you. You were the wolf climbing out. And then you became the panther. This is amazing. This is freaking amazing. I'm going to tag you in this reading, Corey. Somebody in your life, you need to say back off. They're not doing your highest good. And I'm feeling like it's an older man. It's a neighbor. I just got that flash. It's not in your highest good to stay there. Interesting. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. I could go on forever. I, I just keep getting messages. But I'm not, so we're going to go to the I can do it cards. <laughs> Hold on. I'm so glad I kept this ball. I was going to see, I was going to laugh. If there was a Nike symbol on this, I would have laughed my ass off. But it's the Puma, the Universal. I freaking love this. I will never get rid of this. This is going to be, I'm telling you, this, I've kept this for a reason. I told you everything on my patio, everything I have around here, there's a reason for it. This is very, and the fact that it was a blue and black panther, I mean, God. God, I can't, I can't tell you. This is so important. Okay, so I can do it by Louise Hay. What does she have to tell you that you can do? It's as if we don't know that we can. Yes, we freaking can. Oh, this is an I am. Interesting. I am not responsible for other people. There you go. We are all under the law of our own consciousness. Remember yesterday? Be responsible for your part. It's impossible to please everybody in this situation at this time. You take care of yourself. You take care of your actions. Spirit, you already know what you're supposed to do. You're going to lose your ass if you stay there. You're going to drown, but you've got the strength. Your upper body is where your strength is. If you're a freaking rock climber like me, that's where you need strength. I thought that I needed my legs to help me, 
And I thought, oh, I can do this really well, right? I've got really strong legs and I can pull myself up. No, you don't pull yourself up with your legs. You actually need it in your wrist and your hands. You need to have strength and look at where all the emphasis is, right? You're not responsible for other people. We're all under the law of our own consciousness. It is not fun being a victim. I refuse to be helpless anymore. I claim my own power. Hell fucking yeah. You don't like my swearing? Go listen to another reader. Sometimes you gotta have a little emphasis on stuff and sometimes that's where it's at. All right, so at 30 minutes and 24 seconds, I'm gonna keep him here, right? Because he's helping us. We're gonna go to the, um, the yoga frog, the, Asta, the Rasta man. I got that hat when I was in uh, Sedona. I wore it. I've got pictures of me wearing it <clears throat> when I was climbing around and that hacky sack came later, but they're both for my twin. One day he'll get them. I don't know if they'll ever fit his adorable head, but his hair is really long. It's longer than mine right now. God, I love his hair. It's fucking amazing. And I saw that and I was like, damn, don't cut that hair. Do you know why, a lot of, why, why the Indians don't cut their hair? Because they realize that's their psychic antennae. But you gotta condition that hair, and you gotta brush it a little bit better and put it into a nice braid. Keep it, keep it, keep it oiled. Keep it oiled. You know, that's why they keep it under the under the hat, under those Rasta hats. You gotta protect that. That beautiful crown of hair, that glorious mane, that's like Samson, right? Don't let anybody cut that mane. You keep that psychic antennae. All right, here we go. I was just thinking yesterday, or was it this morning? God, my hair's getting long. I wonder if I should cut it. <laughs> Obviously, I just got no. My hair's so freaking long right now. I mean, check it out. I mean, it's in a braid, and it's still down to my waist. <laughs> God. Oh, look at this. There you are. <clears throat> look at that. <sighs> 31 minutes and, well, I don't know, 45 seconds. We start with a yoga Rasta man. <clears throat> the goddess of the unknown. A new chapter of your life is around the corner. Remove fear and embrace the unknown, right? Freaking go for it. Look at you. Look at you. Oh, damn. You're all wrapped in that blue. You're, look at you. You're wrapped in your, in your panther power, right? And look at the black rim. Just like that. Just enough. That's your protection. Oh, this is so freaking awesome. Maybe you're in the desert and you got to keep that wrapped around you. Just keep the dust out of your nose, right? And out of your mouth. Maybe you're supposed to just keep your mouth shut about what you're doing and about where you're going. Right? Remember? It's nobody's business but your own. And this is the goddess that's talking to you. The goddess energy. Goddess of the unknown is talking to you. So you might have a little bit of worry, right? And fear because you don't know it. But hell, you're the fucking panther. <clears throat> Look up the panther totem. It's all about astral travel. It's all about the... Oh my God. If I could, I could go on about the, 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 the panther. I sound hyped up this morning, don't I? I feel it. I've got that energy just bursting through me. Feels good. Feels good. So, unknown. So if you think about what's unknown, it could be exciting. It's, a, it's an, I love excitement. I love adventure. I have to remind myself of this when the next chapter of my life begins and it's like, what? So what they're telling you is you're coming out of the darkness, right? But you can't see the stars until it gets dark. I said that the other night. I was sitting here, right? Last night, I, I did this little video and Liger came out and he was laying. I put a mat down here for Lily and Liger and they come out at night and then they just kind of look out. And it was just when the sun had gone down, it was about seven o'clock <clears throat> and it was too light still to see the stars. And I said, I can't wait. And it literally only took about a half an hour and then the stars came out, <laughs> my stars came out, the lights. All these little lights illuminated and then it was incredible. And there's my black, my black ops, come back here. So we've got a blue dragonfly out there and we've got a black dragonfly. Can you guys see him? The black dragonfly is bigger. He looks like a, um, he looks like a party boat in the air. I'm telling you, he looks like a double decker. When you look at him, he's got, he's like a, um, he's like a crew cab. He's like a crew cab. He's pretty pitching. Um, and that's kind of what you've been feeling like probably like the crew cab, the other person that's been carrying around everybody else's bullshit and it's not for you. So right now, spirit says, you know what? The stars don't come out until it gets dark. But then you, then you're, then you see the stars. Then you see some of the beauty that you're not able to see in the daylight. So it's, it's about seeing the beauty in the darkness and, and, and in what you don't know yet, what hasn't yet to be. 
you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel because it's dark, but Spirit's telling you it's there. Trust them. And you are on the right path, even if you have veered off a little bit for a little while. I said that when we were out on the water the other day, I, I looked across the lake and I saw two geese, right? And I said, you're about to take a turn off, off your path for a minute. You're going to take a jerk to the right, but it's okay. You're going to get right back on in a few, you know, very shortly. And I did in my own personal thinking. Something was said to me and it struck a nerve and I went in the wrong direction. And I didn't realize until you could hear me in my voice. Sandy said something to me and it gave me a message and, and I shifted. And I, she said, the dragons called to me. And I said, yeah, I got that. I understand that. They called to me too, but you know what? I'm a dragon. I'm also a dragon. And so my thinking went off about something. I was right in what I was picking up, but, my, but I included something else in it. And I figured it out quickly and I got right back on. However, me saying that, I was talking to a bunch of us. And at that time, the spirit was saying to whoever chose the Rasta frog, you kind of strayed off a little bit. And you might have thought you completely fell off your path, but you didn't because you had to go do, do that. You had to learn those lessons. There were things that had to happen to bring you the strength, to regain your strength so that you could grab onto the opportunity that was in front of you. Because look where the strength is here. Not there, right? This, there's nothing here. It's like, if you look at this, it's like this part is underwater. But it used to be my head's underwater, right? But now you're not. Because your whole upper body, it's like that, that wolf that was climbing up out of you. If you got in there yourself, you can get out yourself. You can do it yourself. Like I said yesterday, my mom kept wanting to tie my shoes, right? And I said, I can do self. And sometimes we don't help somebody out. Sometimes we have to let them feel like they're drowning in their own waters to make them climb out themselves. And sometimes they don't like it. Sometimes they get mad. <clears throat> but Spirit's saying, you know what? You didn't stray completely off your path. What has happened is a part of your life has ended. It's time to close this half, the ass half, but not this part. This part, look how strong that part is, right? This is about leaping into and pulling yourself in, pulling yourself up out of that water. And he did it quick. I watched him do it. He shook his head up. He shook his whole body when he got out. He's like, Phew. right? And you know what? Sometimes you're underwater because you're embarrassed about what other people think. Remember that when I was standing there, I was thinking, God, she told everybody I lost all my money. Who cares who what anybody else thinks? Everybody's so worried about their own life. <laughs> they don't give a crap about what's going on in your life. Ooh, and as I say that, a green dragonfly came and it was a light green. Love and healing. Gosh, if it comes back again, I'll try and show you guys. So right now, you might be feeling like, oh, God, look at this. I lost my ass. It's okay. Look what you got. This is the most important part. You know what? You can live without this. You can. Have you seen people that have no legs in a wheelchair? You look at them and you think, they don't even have a lower body. How are they living? They're living because everything is here. You can live without this. You can't live without this. You can't live without your spiritual connection. You can't live without your heart. You can't live without this. I lost my ass. Oh, well, that's good. You got freaking strong arms. You got a strong heart. And so that emptiness, whatever you're feeling, and those seeds that you planted there, well, you know what? Grab a handful. Even if you have one, they'll start sprouting pretty soon. Look how fast it comes up. Pretty soon you have a whole flock of sheep gazing and grazing in that field, right? So there's your message. No stressing. No stressing. Crack for neutrality on all levels. What's your I can do it message? Oh, you guys, check it out. I release all resistance to money and I now allow it to flow joyously into my life. Look at this swan bringing you a freaking... <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? Well, they're in their water, right? It's like that party barge, that party barge going across filled with gold and money. What does the gold and money represent? Love, self-worth, respect, abundance in knowledge, successful business venture, whatever it is. All you have to do is release it. Remember, that's the hardest thing is to surrender. When as soon as we surrender it and we just tell ourselves, hey, it's coming. I, I allow it to flow, flow. And I don't even have to bring it because someone else is bringing it for me. Spirit. 
My good comes from everywhere and everyone. That's right. That's right. Don't say, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, whatever it is. This person was at a garage sale selling all their stuff off and this person wanted a lot of what this person had. I want this and I want that and I want this, she was saying. I want this and I want this and I want this and she owed me a lot of money. I want this and I want this and I want this and I want this. Remember, I didn't get my money. She owed me a lot of money. But you know what? It was more important to get out of there. Somebody wanted, 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 wanted until you were literally disappearing. And as far as money, don't worry about it because when you release the worry about it, that's why I said, you know, the number six means don't worry, don't stress about the six doves that flew above. Remember, you're going to paint everything gray, dove gray, dove. I'm not going to worry about the money. I saw six doves flowing above, right? Don't be so concerned about the material world. Release your anxiety, release your need to hold on, release your Com the, the compulsion to I want, I want, I have to have, I have to really, don't worry about it, it's coming as soon as you release it and you just say it flows to me easily in all directions from all kinds of ways money, abundance, ideas help, opportunity, friendship, love my good comes from everywhere and everyone bam okay so now we're going to go to the I was going to say the testy little tiger. The testy? How about the tricky tiger? Hmm, tricky tiger. We're going to go to the tricky tiger. Let's see if the tiger is our friend. We're going to go to the wisdom of Avalon. Well, I've got tiger in me. Right? So does my twin. I'm good. He is too. This one's uh, maybe needs to roar louder than the lion just to get the point across. Or maybe you just need to put that kind of a bravado on so that they don't mess with you right i don't know because right now you're protecting you're protecting it's the self-protection somebody maybe this is telling you that sometimes the tiger roars because they're trying to protect themselves they're they're they're, they're frightened they're nervous who knows we'll see what the message is wisdom of avalon there is butting heads but not a lot a little bit of resistance not a lot Gosh, there goes that barge again with that i want to get on the lake and i want to i want to get up close with that thing and take a look at it I've never seen it on this lake. I've never seen a houseboat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look and see if there are any houseboats for sale in Canyon Lake. Just so I can see what they look like. Correct neutrality on all levels. Okay. At 42 minutes and 37 seconds. Oh, the owl. So I asked if that, um, if that tiger was a friend. And the owl, this is the great horned owl. This is who works with me. He comes and flies around me. He tries to stay out of sight, but I can see him. I catch a glimpse of him, and I, I get warning when he comes. You're going to be getting met, uh, wisdom from the owl, the all-seeing eye. And I felt a shadow, and I looked out, and I was wor working in my... Uh, it was probably just before, just after sunset, and I was sitting right, right here and I, in, in my room, and I felt a shadow. I couldn't see it, but I felt the shadow, and I came out, and that's when he was resting up here. And then he flew across and sat right there. He wanted me to see him. He's like, I'm right here. So the owl says, you need to see past the illusion. There is, you need to use, call on the wisdom of the owl. Three and one is four, right? There are angels all around. They are everywhere. You are completely guided, protected, and loved. There is no reason for fear. Okay? Call upon the wisdom of the owl to help you see past the illusion, through the deception. Interesting. So the owl is your friend, okay? So tiger, you call upon, or maybe you need to call upon the owl to find out about this tiger. Do you need to see if this tiger is your friend? Or do you need to see past the illusion to the deception? Because someone's trying to camouflage their intentions. There's deceit, there's lies, and unclear intentions. Things are unclear. So when you call upon the wisdom of the owl, you're able to see through it. It's also asking you to be honest with yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Stop trying to talk yourself into believing something you want. Because then you're then you're in prison. Remember, remember I said uh, the song yesterday. I'm waking up. Um, I'm 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 checking out of the prison bus. I'm checking out of the prison bus. I'm waking up. Well, we keep ourselves in our own mental prison often. So you can release yourself. 
we call it a prison, but it's not a prison. It's only a prison because you're keeping yourself there or you're allowing others to keep you there, which means you're being the victim. And we release that, right? So look at the truth within yourself. Are you using something? Are you trying to take a shortcut? Are you trying to take it easy? Are you trying to cover up your own part? Or are you trying to make excuses for someone else? The, the owl is your friend. And that's what I, and I've always known that. I'm the red hawk during the day and the owl works at night. They, they work on opposite shifts, but they're partners. When the great horn owl comes, I know he's coming to talk to me. You'll see now evidence of him in your daily life. You'll see his eye, the all-seeing eye that sees through the, through the confusion, through the fog, through the deception. He'll show himself to you. Also, when the owl comes, you don't have to go looking for it if you're like, okay, great, now I've got to figure this out. No, you're just calling on the wisdom of the owl because then the wisdom and the messages will come to you gently like an owl's feather floating. It'll land on your deck just like the one landed on my deck, right? And when you get a wisdom feather, that's also, again, another message that spirit is with you because wherever angels appear, I mean, wherever feathers appear, angels are near, so you are protected the whole time. So the, there's no reason for fear while we're asking you to look through the deception, right? This isn't about freaking you out, making you nervous. The owl is your friend. The owl is your friend. The great horned owl is your friend. That's good to know, right? So now you'll get messages about who is your owl in your life. They'll show you who your owl is, and you'll know that one's your friend. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Enduring loving relationships brighten my life. Oh, right when I say that, guess who shows up? Hi, sweet little chicken. Oh, my. Hi, honey. Coming and grabbing the sweetness in life. Yes, it's a widow, tiny one. That is a baby one. That one's little. Oh, taking a big, long drink. It's interesting to me how they are able to get sweetness out of that. That's a succulent. Oh, sweetheart. Oh my, hi. So you're supposed to take a breath. He sat down, took a, had a, had grabbed a little bit and sat up there and took a breath. And now I'm gonna go over to another. Remember, your, your money flows to you, your abundance comes to you in all different ways, to all different peoples, all different means, right? A little bit here, a little bit there, take a little bit of a rest. Oh, you will accomplish what might seem impossible to yourself as well as others. And look, what's coming to you is loving relationships. Look at this couple. Enduring loving relationships. From time to time, I ask those I love, how can I love you more? Wow. And look at this orange cat, this orphan cat. Remember I said I want an orange cat? And look at this couple loving each other. They're all snuggled up. They're two little lovebirds. What a beautiful place. Look at where they are, you guys. I want to live there with that orange cat. Hmm. This is interesting, this flower right here, this passionate flower. It also looks like a ladybug, right? A lady flower, a ladybug. Daisy, Daisy, it's a girl. When I was on the lake the other day, speaking to the man, the older man who owned the forest. That's why I said, where are my owls, right? And he says, they're not, they, they'll come later. And I was wondering about the owl. At that time I thought, oh, is the owl not my friend? But no, the owl is my friend. I knew they were. And the dog that ran up, it was a white dog. And she was very shy. Oh, you guys. Her name, they gave me her name, the white dog. She was shy. Her name was Daisy. Daisy flower. Daisy. Daisy is a hippie flower. Daisy is an Aries. Daisy is, um, is the flower for the Aries people. Um, she was shy and she belonged. Wow, I don't wanna say the name, but I'm giving myself messages I might be giving you too. 
This cat is Daisy. This redhead, she's a friend. Oh, that's so good to know. That's so good to know for me. Yay. <laughs> they go together. Remember I said I'll take three? They go together. Oh, I like that. It's a beautiful place. I don't know what it means to you guys, but it means a lot for me. How much can I love you more? How can I love you more? From time to time, I ask those, how can I love you more? What can I do to love you? How can I express my love? How can I show my love? How can I prove my love? How can I demonstrate my love? You know what, you can tell somebody that you love them, but how can I love you more? What could I do? Enduring loving relationships brighten my life. The effort that you put in, it's always worth it. Oh, I love that. Wow, I love that. Okay. At 50 minutes, we're going to go to... Life's tough. Wear a helmet. <laughs> Here you are, Red Baron, right? There's the orange cat. This is the orange bird. Angry birds. I thought they were angry, but maybe they were at one time, but they're not now. This is little Robin Redbreast. This is little fat Robin. See the little fat Robin? The little dark head and the little round body. And Robins talk about new beginnings. So we're gonna go to, we're gonna go back to the shadows of or oracles of shadows and light. Okay. So whoever chose life's tough, wear a helmet, right? Life's tough, wear a helmet, put on your spiritual protection, cover that crown, make sure your crown is covered so that you're not buying into anybody else's bullshit and that you're not allowing psychic disruption, right? Your own negative thinking, clear that energy out, keep your crown clear, open, but it's protected and shielded. So clearing and uh, cutting cord ceremonies and um, meditations are very important, keep doing it. Every day, ask spirit, can you clear my energy please, help me clear my energy. We did that this morning, and then we ask for a shield of protection. <coughs> We want our crown open to receive the downloads, but we want to make sure that we're not too open. So what do you do? How do you do that? You keep yourself clean and sober. No, no high, no, no, no smoking and no drinking. Because that doesn't mean you can't take a hit. Doesn't mean you can't have a drink. It just means you need to stay clear and sober. Whatever it takes for you to stay clear and sober, so that you understand and you connect properly. Otherwise, you're not going to get your messages at 52 minutes and 36 seconds. That was a clear cut. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, this is the card that was missing in this deck. This is the card. This is the one that I said I had to buy this whole brand new deck because I couldn't ever do a full proper reading because what if I was supposed to get this message? And there you are, two and three is five. Again, Michael Jordan's colors. It's time to slam dunk that baby. Check it out, right? It's time to jump up for a slam dunk. Significant change occur in your life, always for the better. As long as you keep yourself shielded and protected, right? You stay in the light, you speak your truth, breaking dawn. Those clouds, remember the one yesterday that was talking to the guy at the table and she had the, the puffy clouds on her chest? She was seeing into the future and it was love and it was good. They weren't speaking at that time. He was kind of fading away. He was starting to come out. That's what he was doing, he was starting to come out and it showed himself. Remember the, the guy in the blue suit, Mr. Businessman? So here you got Breaking Dawn, and there she stands. And she's not in dark, she's purple. She's got, she's got a little dark mixed in her wings and in her dress, right? She's accenting with the dark, remember? You don't wanna paint the whole place black. You want dove gray, and you wanna just do the fireplace black. <laughs> so the fire comes out of it and looks like, looks like that, Rah! right? That's what it would look like. So she's there and she's telling you there's something on the horizon that you're not seeing yet. I have seen it. I've already been shown it. You have been so consumed with all of this, losing your ass, that you haven't seen what was coming. But I saw it. You're sitting there all ready for battle, right? I'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. No, I'd rather be a peaceful warrior. I'd rather have it all. But lead with peace, right? Lead with peace. Keep yourself protected, but lead with peace. So she's telling you something good is on, there's, there's possibilities coming in, puffy clouds, not just puffy clouds, pink, loving, and light, and orange is in there as well, sacral chakra, creativity. As long as you stand in your spiritual light, right? As long as you stay on your path, 
this is when you're going to have coincidences show up. This is when certain events are going to line up, where you're going to have friendships that you want, changes that you've been asking for. This is when it starts to arrive. And Spirit says, she says, we want you to take advantage of this. Take advantage of all of it because you've been feeling lackluster. You've been feeling like you lost your ass. You feel like, like you've been drowning. You've been disappearing. Exhausted. I have been, right? Like, God, am I ever going to get to the place where I don't feel exhausted? But that energy is starting to gather, right? Maybe it's just here. Maybe it's just in your head. Maybe it's just in the affirmations. Maybe you're just starting to listen. You're paying attention. Oops, sorry. You're starting to pay attention and you're building your strength. And it's gotten to here. It's gotten to the place where you know I am worthy, right? I can do anything I set my mind to. I can pull myself out of this. It'll, it'll come. It'll come, but it's all the way here in the most important places, right? That energy that you've been wanting to have back, that, that, that desire, that drive, that oomph, it's coming. It's going to start flowing through your whole body again. Pretty soon, this will start filling all of this. But it's in all the most important areas because you're listening now. You got your crown protected. You figured it out, right? You're ready for this leap of faith. You're connecting to spirit. That's what's going on. You've got this spiritual crown on. You've connected. This is it. You've got hope. Brand new hope. And something is going to break through. You're going to get new ideas. You're going to get a different approach to things. You're, you're on the verge. This is breaking dawn. It's when the doves, remember I said painted all dove gray? You hear the doves at dusk and at dawn. Well, this is dawn. So don't don't try and rush through it. Remember yesterday I got patience, grasshopper, <laughs> says the wise old owl to me. Patience, grasshopper, you're almost there. What you've been wishing for. And Spirit wants you to get up. Remember I said yesterday I was tired and I just wanted to sleep for a few more minutes and Spirit said, no, get the hell up. You're wasting your day. Come on. Life's short. Let's get going. Get up and be grateful for what's there. There's all kinds of new things on, on your list that are showing up right now. What's on the agenda? Good stuff. You know how you say we got to be careful of somebody's agenda? We wondered. This is good. There's good stuff on your agenda. Ooh, I love it. I love it. I love it. This is super cool. Correct for neutrality on all levels. What do you have to show us, Louise? What do you have to show us? I'm glad that I kept these cards. I'm glad I kept these cards. I, I got rid of some of my cards. Here's Louise. This is the card that we got, so I'm going to introduce you to her. Metaphysical lecturer and teacher, best-selling author of 27 books, including You Can Heal Your Life, that's the one, an empowering woman. Her works have been translated into 25 different languages in 33 countries in the world. Since her career as a science of mind minister, that's why my mom was into her. My mother was more metaphysical in the science direction, but this person was also spiritual, which is where my mom got right before she went back into spirit. This, she's assisted thousands of people in discovering and using the full potential of their own creative powers for personal growth and self-healing. She is the founder of Hay House. Hay House is where I get most of my cards, right? Publishing company that dis dis disseminates books, audios, and videos that contribute to the healing of the planet. Dear friends, I've written those card, reads these cards as a way to help you create joy in every area of your life. You can experience wealth, health, romance, self-esteem, job success, creativity, a life released from resentment and pain when you accept all parts of yourself and you become whole and healed. Opportunities are everywhere. We have unlimited choices. I invite you to create happiness, health, wealth, and a life full of self-expression. Every day say, I can do it. I can do self. I can do self. And then choose a card and it will become your positive message for the day. This to me looks like a passion flower. I love the passion flower vine. It's beautiful. I had it in Canada. It's gorgeous. Passion. What is your passion? Allow it to flower. This is your sacral chakra. Seed of creativity saying you can do anything you set your mind to. There is love and spirituality. At the heart of everything is love. At the center of your home, the heart of the home is love, right? Healing and growth. Abundance. Yellow friendship. Sunshine. New beginnings. Growth. Everything comes from the sun. Right? The divine masculine forward movement. Love, 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 love. See, there is no mistake. Even when I get the card, that's the description of the box. Because you guys need to do that. You need to know that. I do. Love it. All right. So now we're going to go to the lion. And the lion, his greatest strength is having mastery over his tongue and his sharp claws and his 
and his words or her, right? It's like me, the greatest mastery. Mastery over my tongue, knowing when to speak, knowing how to speak, knowing when to be gentle, when to roar, right? You don't always have to roar. Isn't he beautiful? He sat on the dashboard of my car for the longest time. I love him. He needs to go on a journey with me, this one. Isn't he beautiful, that big cat? I told you I wanted an orange cat. What the hell, you guys? You know what I'm thinking about? Thinking of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, right? Keanu Reeves is my twin. And this one's his partner, his buddy. We need to go on an adventure together. Look at this. Is this me? Oh my God, is this me? This is me. I told you I'm half lion, half tiger. Oh my God, we need to go on an adventure. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Look at those forearms. Okay, check it out, you guys. This is the male and this is the female. You're seeing a lion and I'm seeing a panther, but this is also the cougar because the cougar, when I moved to Arizona, that's when the cougar showed up and the cougar is talking about your own personal power embracing your own personal power. Look at the power that they have in their forearms. And look at those claws. They can dig in and see things through to completion. But look at the white, right? And, and, and the white around the mouth. Now, you're thinking, oh, that's gray? No, I'm thinking this is wisdom. And it's light, speaking the light, the truth, purity. And the heart is covered in light. Oh, what comes from you is peace. For me and my part, I choose peace. Don't ask me to look, go. For where you go, I will follow, and your people will be my people, and your God is my God. I choose three. I choose three. There they are, the tiger, the lion, and the panther. Oh my God, I'm getting, my heart chakra starting to spin. Okay, we're gonna go to the wisdom of Avalon for this last, last message. I love this reading. You know how sometimes the readings are just super awesome? This is one of them. This is an exciting reading. This is a positive. This is a reading of togetherness. It's also full circle completion. All of these are in one. I also believe that. The divine, Jesus is seen as the lion, right? The son of God. Look at those eyes, you guys. Look how gentle that face is. Looks like you're big and scary, but you're a sweetheart. I just heard the grandfather. Mom and dad and son. Mom and dad and daughter. Oh, there's so many messages I'm getting right now. Full circle completion. Three is a very powerful number. Oh my God, one hour and three minutes. Oh my God, disruption. Now check it out. So many people fear the falling tower. So many people freak out about the tower. They're like, oh my God, that's bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Look at this. When the great wave comes, go to the mountain, the mountain with the tablets. The tablets represent waterfalls. Look at that beautiful forest. Look at that forest. And look at the water rushing. This is water, life-giving knowledge. This is truth. This is change. This is the river. Have you finally found the river that leads to the sea? There's a song. I said I grew up on the mountain, on the river, at the mouth of the ocean. That's where I grew up. That's where I want to go back. Home. This is good. This dress disruption is good. 9, 10, 11, 12. 1 and 2 is 3. <laughs> 3. Full circle completion. You go back to the beginning because sometimes the beginning feels like an ending. Remember, we got that yesterday. Disruption. Whatever it is, it's a shakeup. It's a shakeup. Anything that was placed on a false or a faulty fault line, when you have an earthquake and, you don't, and, and you're on the fault line, you're shaken up, right? And if you're not strong, if what your, your friendships, your relationships, your business, your personal health, your mental health, everything, if it's not on a solid foundation, it's going to fall to the ground. Remember that person? Oh my God, I lost everything. I lost my shit. I lost my shit. I had a breakdown. I lost my job. I lost my money. Everything fell apart. Yeah, because it wasn't in the highest good the way it was. And we're going to wash that away. You let the tears wash it away. You let the truth wash it away. You let the past 
come and be washed away. When the river runs forward, it turns up rocks. It brings up rocks from the past. It brings it up so you can heal those things. See the love and healing? Sometimes life is a raging sea, a raging river. Sometimes it's peaceful and calm. When I lived on the Seymour River in the summer, actually in the spring, as soon as we, where we were out in that river when it was freezing, the snow would melt up here and then the water would start rushing and we'd get these giant inner tubes truck inner tubes and we'd go to the local gas station and have a bazillion patches spent the whole day in the sun you know patching the inner tubes because we were so excited that we were going to take those inner tubes up the river and ride the rapids down right we rode the we rode those rapids until it was snowing right now it's rushing away it's it's brushing away what is no longer good right this is telling you also this is a warning i was lightning before the thunder Okay, I was lightning before the thunder. You see the lightning and then you hear the thunder. Now think about that. This is a warning. Be very careful when you make the choices that you make right now. This is possibly something that you've been working for that's going to fall apart. Now know this now. See this? This is falling apart. You're going to lose your ass if you don't get yourself out of there, if you don't make the right choices, right? What you've been working hard towards in a certain area is going to fall apart, possibly. What you've been working hard, an idea. This is a total destruction of something that you worked so hard for. And you're thinking, oh my God. But it's a cleanser. It's cleansing away what no longer works. If you flush something out of, some, out of the system, you've got, a, uh, you've got the toilet. It's full of shit. You flush the toilet and you get rid of it. You get rid of all that shit. You get rid of all that junk. That's what spirit's doing. It's, they're flushing the toilet. You know what? We're going to flush the toilet on this, on this project. We're going to flush the toilet on that old relationship. It stinks. It stinks. It's causing, it'll breed bacteria and sickness and your whole house is going to start smelling if you don't flush that, right? Get the shit out of you. It's also about cleansing and purging your body, clearing out of your body toxins that, that, that don't belong there. Maybe you need to do a cleanse and flush your system. Get medical drugs out of your body. When Prince got sick, and we, we took him in to have surgery, right? That's spirit taking you in to have surgery. Radical changes had to happen to that person's life in order to keep him safe. His body reacted violently, but it wasn't so bad that his body reacted. The do doctors overdosed him. So who's the doctors in your life? Somebody who's prescribing something for you that isn't in your highest good, but you allow it to happen. He didn't have a choice. You might not have had a choice either. And they overdosed him, and he had drugs in his system, and those, those drugs had to be washed out. I used cannabis oil to help him work through it until he was able to clear his system out. You guys seen the videos of him. It was awful to watch him to come down. It was horrible. He was in pain and he had to have another surgery. The spirit had to go back in and say, hey, you know what? We need to alter something else. And by the end, his whole body was changed radically. It's like having a vasectomy. My girlfriend, Kimmy, just had a hysterectomy. She was worried about it. And I said, you know what? It's going to be the best thing you ever did. She was scared. She had the surgery. It was the best thing she ever did best thing I ever did man no more periods hell yeah I don't want to deal with the cramps and the pain and the mess and the yuck it's over right you can't have kids anymore see it changed a part of her life but it was good change is it's always going to be difficult when we have change you're going to sacrifice something but you get something else so spirit saying there is possibly chaos happening right now but it is the ultimate cleanser there could be delays there could be upsets Oh my God, I lost all my money and everyone knows, that's okay. Grab what you can and get the hell out of there. That's the blessing, you get to escape. But I worked so hard for this. If I stayed here, yeah, but that's not the best place for you because you're losing yourself. You gotta get out, right? So sometimes we have to sacrifice. Sometimes you gotta walk away. Oh God, I saw this in a dream two years ago. You can't take everything with you. But can you tell, nope, you gotta go. You gotta go now. It's your choice, but you gotta go. So it's time to rethink, it's time to rebuild, it's time to make what was unstable. Maybe this has already happened. Maybe this is over. For some, it's happening. Some, it's going to happen. This is the warning telling you to be careful about your decisions. Make the choices appropriately. Lose what you don't need, right? I won't be on solid ground. I won't be able to stand. Remember that guy on the, on the paddleboard in the back? He was in the back. He was, he was, he was holding things up because he wanted to stand. He wanted to be strong on his, on his foundation. But finally he realized, you know what, it's getting windy, it's getting choppy. I gotta get out of this safe bay, I gotta go. So he sat his ass down on that board, on his love, and he went forward and he, and he, and he passed the, the darkness in the center and he met up with healing and love. 
So that's what's going on right now. Look, you're going to lose your ass, but that's okay. You still have this. Sit down on your, on your boat. This is about wanting to become before you're ready. Oh, well, I wanted to be firm and strong on my foundation. Well, my dad and mom wanted that too. Remember when they got, wanted to get together and my dad only had 50 bucks in his pocket? He knew that he was going to build more, but he wasn't going to wait. Time was a marching. And so I took that 50 bucks, bought her a ring, got married, and I'm telling you, it was a very short amount of time that they had to stay. We had to live in, in a friend's place like this. It's like, he, it's, like, it's like the love of my life coming and staying with me for a couple months, right? And then they moved into that character home. Or maybe you have already done this, like I said in the dream, right? Maybe I've, this has already happened, and now you're getting out of there. You now are supposed to rebuild what was shaky before. You've built your strength. You've got your head back together, right? Your heart's strong again. And now it's time to rebuild this foundation. The foundation that was weak before. Now this is the opportunity. Remember yesterday, Spirit said we're giving you an opportunity, karma, to rebuild. It's, it's time to cut out certain things, but it's giving you a chance. Somebody emerges back into your life to give you the opportunity to rebuild what was not strong before. It's a gift. You get to begin anew. And if you didn't have the, that time where you were able to get your head together and your heart together, you wouldn't be able to now start at the base, at the beginning, and rebuild the solid foundation. But it's very important. And how do you build a solid foundation? On friendship, on trust, right? Let's see what your final message is. That's why you have to be careful about your alliances and contracts and who you sign with. And you know what? Maybe it's more important for you to get the hell out of Dodge than be with what's consuming you or what's going to take you down. You don't want to lose this. Oh my God. I am not responsible for other people. We are all under the law of our own consciousness. It is not fun being a victim. I refuse to be helpless anymore. I grab onto the edge of that emotional pool right there the steps are there spirit showing me what my steps are and i can claim my power and i am claiming my power i'm getting out of this i'm ready to rock and you know what maybe you're leaving these ones behind and you're going remember you always had the three and one left missing man missing man formation wow i'm also seeing allow this one to go into spirit right missing mound foundation and then come back together as one. Lose your shadow. Wow. Very powerful. All right, you guys, at one hour and 13 minutes, I'll let you go. I love you.